Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity. I'm home, honey. Hi everyone and welcome to a very special episode. Today I am at the New York Toy Fair 2020, coming to see what the new products are for this year and hopefully to find some cool products for the store. And because of that, I have two passes, one as a buyer and one for the press, which I think I'm the only guy here at this whole event that has both. But let's go have a look around. I'll show you what the Toy Fair is all about and hopefully I'll find some cool products that I can bring back home to my store. Located at the Jacob Javits Convention Hall in New York City, New York, there is a big crowd of people from all around the world who come here to find toys for their shops, for their businesses, suppliers looking to sell things. It's a big event and lots of fun. We're gonna wander through into the main entrance hall and see what's going on. Someone spent some real time with some Lego building these guys. All these minions are life-size at the Lego display. Very fun. Inside these walls is a virtual wonderland of toys, collectibles, and anything that anybody would ever want to have, whether you're a kid or an adult. It's just a place for fun. Someone had to go to great efforts at the Kinex factory to build all this. Working lift bridges. And this thing is massive. Look at the sizes compared to these people. I think it's huge. Such a fun show. But as much as there's an awful lot for me to look at and see, just for fun, I also have to think about my store and think about buying. Um, so I've got to keep my eyes open for products I think might be a good fit for our shop. I've decided to make a pit stop with the current supplier of mine, Melissa and Doug. They carry a lot of great quality products for children, including some retro items. We're going to have a look and see if they've got anything new this year that might make its way through the store. I love the little miniature play sets and little houses. There's some great doll houses you guys do too. I was looking over here. And these are all wood, are they not? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that great? Now the one thing that Melissa and Doug carries that I'm a big fan of are their puppets, right? <laughs> They're awesome. They're very durable. I've had these, uh, our kids have had the same type of puppet for over 10 years. They've abused them, played with them, and they last forever. They're amazing. So I'll be picking up some more of these today too. One thing I didn't carry last year at the shop were these. These are cuddle plush. They're essentially like a, a plush animal you can use as a pillow. Kids love soft, tactile things. And I do carry some items for kids, of course, at the store. That's why I'm here. Um, so I think I'm gonna order a display of these for the shop. I think that's gonna be amazing. And I think the kids in my neighborhood would love to have one of these cuddled up in their room. First order is done. Got some cool Melissa and Doug products. Now to look around for something maybe I don't carry and find some new things to bring in. And there are companies from all over the world, from Germany, such as this booth here, where they're carrying their sleds and toboggans, all the way through to Switzerland, Sweden. I mean, it's an international event, and I'm sure there's gonna be something for me to find. Some companies like Brio have been around for many, many years making things like their wonderful wooden train sets. I'm sure everybody's had a chance to play with one of these over the years. But when you come around and look and see, they've expanded now into educational games, things that'll really get you thinking. So companies do change what they're carrying and it's always fun to see what the new products are and what they've got coming through. These are a line from a company called Mego or Mego. They've been around forever. In fact, uh, there's a 1970s set right there, which they brought in just to show off in the history of the brand. But now they've introduced some figures like this, it, Pennywise, of course, with his balloon. What a lovely thing to have. But kids nowadays are really getting into the collectibles and action figures, just like their parents did. You wanna have what mom and dad has. Even the old Star Trek figures, they'll reproduce and you can get the original style, Spock or Kirk, a lot of fun gonna give this some strong consideration. I think they just look fantastic. Now this is an impressive piece. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a die cast quite as big as this John Deere Combine 116 scale. Absolutely massive. It takes up this entire four foot square mirrored countertop. I absolutely love the detail they put into it. Everything works and rotates and moves. 
just excellent quality. And uh, Tommy, as it turns out, is now looking after Ertl. Many collectors out there watching have probably seen the Ertl products before. And they're coming back with some really cool retro items like the Alice Chalmers WC tractor. And it looks like it did when it first came out with the little toy figure on the back. Lots of fun items. Um, I love this, how it's got the barn fine look with the dust and dirt added onto it. Just really fun little details that make a difference in your collection. Well, that thing looks like an absolute blast. In fact, the guy who's zipping around on there is the inventor of that little machine. I did talk to them about possibly bringing those in the shop because I think my customers and the kids in my area would probably have a lot of fun on that thing uh, if they're not you know, getting sick from it. But that looks like a super good time. These are kind of fun. They are called a night ball. They have basketballs. They've got footballs. They glow in the dark. So if you've ever tried playing and it starts getting to be dusk and you can't see, well, that's a fun way to light it up. Now, I think the kids in my neighborhood might think those are pretty nifty. And I was looking at their little video here, these guys playing, and you really see how they light up and they glow. They're rechargeable. Who knew how much fun a rechargeable glow-in-the-dark basketball, or in that case, volleyball could be. But that's just a lot of fun. I think that's really, really cool. Now, as a buyer at a show like this, you're trying to keep a few things in mind. One is what looks really cool, what might be fun, but also what's your demographic? I have it at an elementary school across the street from the store. Uh, there's a community hall, a park. So I'm looking for things that I might be able to sell that will make sense for my neighborhood, for my business. So things like the glow-in-the-dark basketball, I think that might not be a bad thing. In fact, I did an order of those. We'll see how they go over this summer, but also things that are gonna really wow our customers and just have a lot of fun and excitement in the store. This booth kind of caught my eye because what they do is they turn your backyard into a park. You can get all sorts of playthings and toys you can add to your backyard to accessorize it. But this is what really caught my eye. My kids would love to have a zip line in the backyard and you can just buy one of these, throw it in your backyard, run it across and your kids go swinging around like crazy. Made in the USA, holds up to 225 pounds. So depending upon where you're at, adults can go on there too. What a fun idea to convert your backyard into something a little bit more fun. Now, I walked into a booth and I saw these and I was just mesmerized by the quality of the graphics. This, everybody remembers playing maybe Ninja Turtles on arcade, but look, this is just miniature and it's a 3D, like it, it's as good as the real arcade game. These are full functioning arcade that'll fit in the palm of your hand. Now, I couldn't walk away without buying something here. So I am gonna try and place an order to get maybe Frogger, uh, they have Pac-Man. It's so hard to pick because they're all so much fun. And they said that these have 200 levels on each game. Really, really exciting. I'm looking forward to having these in the shop. I think they're gonna go over really, really well. And this is what adults get paid to do when you work at a toy fair. How big is this bubble gonna be? She's working up a big bubble. I can see this happening. <laughs> you should be worried right now. You're gonna be really soapy in a minute here. Oh, there it goes. That is like a six foot oh. diameter bubble. <laughs> I'm getting paid to do this today. That's right. Have you ever tried jumping inside of one of the bubbles? I wish I could, but it's a little too windy in here today. Oh, okay. All right. No bubble tricks today. Can you believe it? After all these years, they have brought it back the famous one and only Evil Knievel stunt cycle. You might remember this, uh, Duke Kaboom off of the Disney movie, very loosely kind of based on Evil Knievel. Uh, they're remaking these. And when Melissa and I owned our toy store years ago, we used to carry these and they were so much fun to have around. But that's not all you carry. I was talking with Mark here, and now you have to explain to me what is a Star Cube? A Star Cube is a geometric cube. It very unusual. It changes from six colors to 12 colors, but I can turn this over like this, and this goes like that, and a star what? pops out. Where did that come from? And then I do this, now I've got two stars. Okay, then now can you juggle now, those now, stars? Now, now I can do this, <laughs> and I can do this, and now I've got two cubes. They're the same size as the original, but this one's gonna go inside of there. 
So, and it's much, I'm making this look a lot easier than it is to do. Well, you've probably done this a few times. Done it a few times. There you go. Now it's back to what it was. That is great. So that would be like a great fidget toy. Exactly. Keep exactly. your kids occupied on a family trip for a little while. I know my son, Jason, would just absolutely love that. And this will go forever. I can see that. It's mesmerizing watching you do that. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to try and do an order here today, Mark. All right, thanks. It's not a taste testing station. It's a putty sampling station. You can check and see all the different types of putty that there are. This is a company called Aaron's Putty, Crazy Aaron's. And you can put your hand in there and just try all these out and see what they're like. They've got quite the little variety. Now this is a company that I already deal with. This is Schilling. They carry all sorts of wonderful retro toys made in the exact fashion that they were back in the 1950s and 60s. Um, while I'm here, I may as well see if I should do a reorder and get some more fun product. With some of the bigger companies like Lego, you actually have to book yourself in an appointment to come and visit with them. I have one coming up in just a few minutes, and we're going to get a chance to see what new exciting sets are coming out for 2020. We're going to have a new products that we're launching this year. What you'll see here is only the first half of the year. Um, so we are launching more for the second half, but we're not going to be doing that yet. Okay. Um, of course, everybody loves Spider-Man, everybody loves Marvel. Very cool. There he is. He's an angry looking guy. Now, does he have a happy face on the other side where he's just like chilling in his backyard? No, he's just angry he's all the time. They're like, nah, he doesn't deserve a happy, smiley Lego face. He's angry Thanos all the time. Um, and we have Tokyo and Dubai here. Um, and all of our architecture line is really focused on you know, more of an adult Disney's collector. Exactly. And this is what you're into. You like this in Disney. I like this in Disney. So, but yeah. your Disney princesses are going to be like massive. They're going to be overtaking like Dubai. The larger build, like the castle and things like that. Oh, go big or go home, mm -hmm. right? And you get into some of the collector sets exactly. over here. So with Star Wars, this is actually coming out in August. It's our Brickhead set for the Mandalorian. That baby Yoda? The child and the Mandalorian. Is that, Yoda looks like he's inside of a little uh, booster, a Yoda little booster little seat. Yeah. <laughs> That's so we cute. We have the Dio droid. So this is coming out in April, and it was inspired by the Rise of Skywalker. Um, this one's really cool. Actually, has some functionality to him. So he has these gears. You can actually spin him up and down and around. So a little bit more engaging. And Star Wars is such a big franchise. I mean, from the first time they brought out a Lego set, it's been a, kind of a mainstay for Lego since yeah, then. What, in the 1990s they started bringing 1999, it out? 1999, I believe, was when um, Star Wars brought in as an IP under the Lego group. And of course, for collectors out there, Lego sets from the 1990s, if they're still in the original packaging, can be quite valuable. Yeah. Lego is one of the few modern toys that you can play with it, you keep your box and instructions, you might actually be able to get all of your money back and make money off it because it just is really a fantastic product. In limited edition series that you just won't find down the road, collectors love them. There's all sorts of collectors groups from young and old, Lego attracts many, many different types of customers. So wait, when you close that play set up, he turns into a minion. Yeah, I would have that look on my face if I opened up and had a little village inside <laughs> And his eye too. even like turns because it's just ah. a little bit even more crazy. Um, so with this, you can build all. You can build all three, but only two at a time. So you can build Kevin and Stuart or Bob and Stuart. And you can see Bob is a little bit crazier with oh, his yeah. two eye colors. That is so cute. Um, the Mandalorian set. So this is the razor. And this, Pressed. this Mandalorian ship, you can only get this on Amazon, is that correct? correct? So it's all secret. They have... I'm impressed by the technology. This glass will frost itself out with the click of a button. They may as well... It's like you have the uh, the jewel of the ocean. Or <laughs> you got some kind of crazy diamond under here. But no, it's a Mandalorian spaceship. And then you have the baby Yoda, or sorry, the child minifigure, and then the Mandalorian minifig. <laughs> um, the ship is actually very cool. It opens up in a lot of ways. Oh, look at that. And the cockpit opens up, so you can get really interactive with it, or you can just have it on your shelf as a collector. Really, really cool. Telling me that I need to tap the screen. So it's interactive. You can play with it as a toy, but you so can also we, use the app. So he's saying, turn the color wheel to blue. So if you come here, there's this color wheel, and you turn it to blue, you can tap it, it recognizes that it's blue. 
it kind of tells you what to do as you work through the app. What? What's new this year is we released a multiplayer functionality. So if you have two people with the app, they can actually play together and interact with the game. Well, my daughter Abigail would go absolutely crazy at this booth. She has quite the collection of Thai beanie booths, just like that. And I'm pretty sure this would be her wonderland if she was here today. Uh, what's this guy doing? <laughs> so you are... Captain Blood. Captain Blood. Spelled B-L-U-D-D-E. It's and, the old English spelling. And now you have a toy store. In Narrowsburg, New York. Okay. We're right on the Delaware River, actually. And now, do you dress as Captain Blood on a regular basis, or is this special for today? Well, uh, well, basically, as often as I can. Uh, actually, I like this form of clothing. Okay, as a matter of fact, um, if it was up to me, I'd dress like this all the time. Well, I think you should. Don't let the society tell you what to do. <laughs> they never do. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, I, you know, I think I, I get photographed more times than a rock star, actually. It's amazing. <laughs> well, you look fantastic. I had to stop and say hello. Now, this is fun. Really detailed Marty McFly, you know, the series, animated series. And it always surprises me to see some really fun retro things. Of course, I remember when I was a kid, even a Bob Ross. Now, this is cool. At this booth, they've gone to the efforts of recreating the whole bar scene from the Gremlins movie, including all the pictures on the walls. It's like an exact replica. Amazing detail here. Creepy, funny, quirky. That's what it's all about. Look at the mess these guys have made. Popcorn, beer bottles all over the place. What fun. How about a Monopoly set made out of Zorowski crystals? You might have to pass go a few times before you can buy it, but what a special piece. Now this was something kind of unique. Now everybody's seen plush animals before. It's very soft, it's cuddly, it's cute. But what's interesting about this is that they start off life as bottles. They recycle them, they break them down in their different forms, and then they end up getting this sort of plushy fiber, and that's what they use to make their animals. So recycling, saving the oceans by making stuffed animals that look like they're from the ocean, what a great idea. So you might recognize that is being a vintage Bongos BMX, and of course, the Schwinn. These are replica bikes that were made from the dies, the cast from Stranger Things. And you were saying they've done just a fantastic job replicating every detail, right down to the the decals that are on here. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of nuggets that we put on this bike. So Hawkins I mean, bicycle license. That's that's cute. Very much so. And you know, they're they're certainly they're not replicas from you know like the 1983 mongoose bike, but they're inspired by. So they have all the feel, like the colorways, um, the fork, the frame, the bullet hole, and the frame is a is kind of a vintage mongoose mm -hmm. uh, frame aspect, all the way to the Maurice logo on the pad set. Now, are these a limited run, or would these be available to people for, I guess, as long as the series remains popular? <laughs> yeah, well, so they, we started off, um, you know, selling these at Target, and we ended up selling through. Now, um, this particular bike is located at some international dealers. So around the world, like I've seen these pop up in Australia and the UK, um, and now in the U.S., they're back at Walmart.com. Okay, and what is suggested retail on this bike? Uh, these are two nineteen ninety nine. So very affordable for a nice retro looking bike. Well, thanks so much for showing me. I love seeing these sorts of things. That's great. How about the world's largest arcade game? You actually need to have a little platform ladder to get up to the like, top. Like, what's right on, dude? Well, that's it. It was a fun time at the show. I got to see some cool products and run into Captain Blood because you never know when he's going to show up. Um, hope you guys liked today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tune in for more. And uh, yeah, New York Toy Fair 2020, a lot of fun and got some products for the shop. I think it all worked out really well. Have a great day, we'll see you all soon and bye for now.